Hello, everybody. <clears throat> How y'all doing today? Uh, hope everybody's doing well. I uh, had a crazy couple of days putting together my own projection model, but I like it a lot. Uh, I know that there's some stuff that I still have to work out in terms of outliers and managing outliers, um, but for real, I'm happy. Uh, I like it. I really do. Um, I want to give a shout out to Grace, who you see here all the time, Grace Esquiz, uh, Esquiv. Um, yesterday, I was having a lot of trouble. Uh, you know, I don't know. Hey, Rich, how's it going? I don't know Excel. Like, I know how to do math. I know how to put pro projections together. But the reason I had someone else is because I'm not, you know, the best when it comes to Excel and that kind of stuff. You know, I don't know, like, the functions and... All that, so I had to crash course myself, and then there were a lot of, a lot of places I was like, "Oh damn, I don't know, I don't know how to like actually do this." Mm -hmm. And granted, there's still a lot of stuff I really don't know. So if you watch this, and you like really know Excel, uh, hit me up, uh, bathrobedfs at Gmail, because there's still a bunch of stuff that I want to add in in easier ways or add in period, excuse me, and uh, I just don't know how. But Grace sent me like a projection system, uh, like template kind of thing uh, on uh, on Google Sheets. And that gave me so much information in terms of like functions that I didn't know existed. And oh, it was it was a godsend. That's the only reason that I got anything finished yesterday, uh, much less both batters and hitters. Um, so I am very pleased that uh, since they are mine now, uh, I can share them at my own leisure. You know, I had, I had said before the reason I had done a subscription fee uh, and everything was because I hired Kyle to do the numbers uh, and I really wanted um, to, to be able to pay him. You know, I didn't want it to be like, hey, do this work and, you know, eventually it'll be okay. You know, I wanted to give him something. And while not a lot, I wanted to give him something, you know, and he, he, he got it, and then he took the projections and ran. So I had to put this all together myself. But now, uh, you know, what I'll be able to do um, is, uh, I don't know, I, you know, I have to figure out how to do this because there's a lot that, I, that that's coming with bathrobe sports. Everything's going to change dramatically, uh, you know, still the same type of content. Uh, and I'm still going to have everything that I have now, uh, videos. It's just going to expand, and oh, it's going to be wonderful, folks. There's a lot of a lot of stuff coming, so stay tuned. But one of the good things is now I get to share uh, some projections with you while I'm doing the video because I'm not like stealing them from my employee uh, who I want, you know, who I wanted to get paid. Now it's just me, and I could give you whatever I want, which is everything. So let's take a look really quick because we only have uh, 16 minutes at the uh, Cubs Cardinals game uh, in case you are playing the showdown. Um, so this game <clears throat> is interesting. The Cubs are resting a few people, uh, which makes the lineup I know, a little easier. Schwarber's not in the lineup. So Rizzo's leading off. That makes him one of the best plays, you know, as well as he's been pitching. If you've been following my stuff since the beginning of the season, uh, you know that I am a firm member of, if not the founder of, Operation Stack Against Miles Mikolas. Uh, I've explained it many, many times before. Um, when uh, Miles Mikolas is a control pitcher, and he's not just like a moderate control pitcher. He's an extreme control pitcher. He's not going to get you with his stuff. He's not going to get you with strikeouts. He's going to get you by being very clever, very intelligent, and then putting pitches exactly where he wants. And I mean that it sounds like an exaggeration, but extreme control. Like he walked like 20 people all last season. I'm not exaggerating, but what happens when you're an extreme control pitcher is on days that you don't feel it on days that you extreme control is only like very good control. Uh, you get shelled because you don't have that stuff to fall back on. 
So when Miles Mikolas pitches, uh, and we saw at the beginning of the year, uh, if he is not feeling it that day, he is going to get hammered because there is nothing, no pitch that he has that he can really hide behind. So this Cubs offense, with Rizzo leading off now, uh, is in a fantastic spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also, <clears throat> with the people resting, uh, Cargo moving up to the three hole uh, is fantastic. Hayward moving up to the five hole is a nice extra value. And then Caratini, who's been cold but getting the start, uh, over Contreras is also a really nice play. You have some uh, decent, really cheap options uh, in this Cubs lineup due to the fact that, you know, Schwarber and Contreras uh, are sitting. So I think that, you know, Gonzalez batting third is a, is a must play. Rizzo is one of the best options, if not the best option for captain. Uh, and, you know, if you can get Bryant or Baez and or in there, uh, that would also be fantastic. I really, you know, I don't want to play Mikolas, and I'm going to continue uh, playing this showdown so that I can uh, make 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 use of Operation Stack against Mikolas whenever I can. Uh, on the other side, Cole Hamels is, I think he's getting to that old pitcher status where every once in a while he's going to have a really good start or chain a couple good starts together, but for the most part he's going to be, you know, hit or miss. Uh, and lately, if you go into the advanced stats, he has been a lot more missed than hit. Uh, I mean, I'd only have to give you one stat here, uh, and it will tell you everything that you need to know. Sorry, my throat's still scratchy from the last couple of days. <clears throat> um, Cole Hamels' strikeouts per nine over the last two weeks is 3.3. So if he's not striking anybody out, he's walking five per nine, you know, XFIP is 6.33, Sierra is 6.79. Uh, we have a pitcher going against a very good Cardinals offense against righties. Uh, you know, while they may not all be uh, uh, on fire right now, uh, DeYoung is starting to heat up. Goldschmidt, Ozuna, Jerko, uh, Bader, and then again, while Waiters is cold, He's a switch hitter like Frankie Lindor that's much better uh, hitting as a righty. Uh, so when you get the chance to play uh, weeders against a righty, uh, excuse me, against a lefty, uh, that's something that you should you should consider. And if you look at the price, he's only 6,200. Um, only 6,200 on the showdown. So that is really a fantastic play. Uh, so that should basically sum that up. Uh, I am going heavy onto bats here. Uh, I'm not going to play the pitchers. Uh, in fact, and this is, this is something that doesn't happen often, uh, in the entire game, there is only one batter that I have classified as hot over the last week, and that is Colton Wong, uh, who doesn't hit lefties anyway and gets a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. Uh, also, and I will tell you this uh, because, you know, it's it's information that I'm going to uh, ignore based on how poor the pitching is, but you might think is is very worthwhile. Uh, as I've discussed, uh, Wrigley is a wind field. It is very, very affected by how the wind is blowing. The pitching is uh, really affected if it's blowing in, and it's really hurt if it's blowing out. Uh, and the stronger, the more effect, obviously. Uh, and right now the wind is blowing in. Oh, I'm getting a whole lot of things. Okay. Nope, that is not questions or my wife. Uh, so the wind's blowing in at 11 miles per hour, which means that it is a boost to both pitchers. Uh, so again, while I don't like both pitchers, uh, Vegas has both teams under four runs. Uh, which means that both pitchers should be okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like I said, scratchy throat. I apologize. <coughs> okay. Let's try that again. Uh, both teams are under four runs. The wind's blowing it in 11 miles an hour. I would just expect that this makes the pitchers a lot more popular. Uh, in the showdown slate, that they're going to have really high ownership. And I I just don't think they're that good pitchers. So, uh, you know, 
Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to stack against them and, and buck the field and go six bats here. So that's it. Let's move on to the night slate. Uh, we have a smattering of lineups that have come out so far, uh, which makes it a lot easier to talk about those specific things. Um, so the first up, we have the Reds and the Phillies. Uh, Tyler Male is taking on Zach Eflin. Both of these pitchers have been awful lately, which means that this is uh, a load up on bats game. Excuse me. Um, both teams are projected to get around four and a half runs. So uh, while, uh, you know, comparatively, there are a lot of other places I would rather go. Um, this is one of those, if you're playing a whole lot of lineups, have some exposure to to, to the to the Reds and the Phillies because both of these teams are in very good spots today uh, against very poor pitchers. Um, so again, the, you know, if you're playing one lineup, uh, if you're playing three lineups, you know, there's going to be a plethora of teams that you're going to want to choose from uh, over the Reds and the Phillies. But uh, I know I, I would, I would, Regardless, seriously consider both. Uh, again, both pitchers have been in really bad form. Uh, the wind's going to be blowing out, you know, seven, eight miles an hour. Male's given up 3.6 home runs per nine. Eflin, 4.9 home runs per nine over the last couple weeks. Uh, both of them have FIPs, you know, at seven or more. Uh, so, you know, while there may be other ba- better teams going against worse pitchers, both of these teams are in really good spots. Um, I, I do like, uh, you know, the top of the Reds order, especially Dietrich, uh, the way he's been hitting. He projects really, really well uh, by my deal here. Um, Dietrich is, comes in, well, let's see. We have Votto uh, projected to get 8.77 points for 2.37 times value. Uh, Dietrich 11.77 uh, for 2.35 value. Uh, and then on the other side of the game, it's, you know, a whole lot of good hitters. Cesar Hernandez, well, not good hitters, but good spots. Cesar Hernandez, about nine points, 2.42 value. Bryce Harper, 12.34, 2.63 value. Well, uh, John- Gene Segura, 8.62 points for 2.21 value. Reese Hoskins, 10.86, 2.53 times value. Jay Bruce, 12.59 points, 2.47 value. So, Again, you're going to see some uh, better options uh, as we go down here, but this is this is again two offenses that are in really really good spots uh, that project really really well today, uh, and I'm going to want to have some of. So uh, that is that. Moving on, we have the D-backs and the Blue Jays. Uh, this is one where I am, you know, Stroman is not a great pitcher. Uh, he's not a terrible pitcher. Uh, but he is a, a very severe ground ball pitcher. Uh, so we can see that um, uh, if you look again over the last couple of weeks, like I always try to do when it comes to pitching, uh, where is he? Stroman has struck out three per nine. So he is absolutely unusable. But, you know, his FIP is still 3.82. His whip is still 1.08. He's not giving up home runs. So while, you know, Stroman is overpriced for what he provides you in terms of uh, fantasy points, he is not someone uh, that, that we can play against either. So I'm not taking a Diamondback stack. Uh, on the other side, we have Merrill Kelly. Merrill Kelly, um, I have called the poor man's Miles Mikolas because he is a worse version of Miles Mikolas, just like you know Tom Petty is the poor man's version uh, of Bob Dylan. Uh, not to say Tom Petty's bad, but come on, let's let's be real. He's not Bob Dylan. Uh, so, you know, Merrill Kelly is one who, if he's, if his control is fantastic, uh, if his control is fantastic, um, he's going to be a fantastic option, but 8,400 on DraftKings for that kind of, you know, low strikeout plotting guy, uh, is not something that I'm going to pay for, regardless of how good his form has been. Uh, you know, the Blue Jays, as 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 often as they've made bad pitchers look like aces, they still have some really good bats in that lineup. Uh, and Goriel leading off is is one of the best uh, that I have projected today. Uh, where is it? Lourdes Goriel, I have getting 12.68 fantasy points uh, for 3.25 value. 
Uh, if, well, that's if he leads off, obviously. It changes depending on where he is in the order and everything, uh, because the top of the order projects to get extra at-bats, uh, depending on what run total everything is. So, um, yeah, everything in this formula is crazy that I did with the projections, but I stand by them. I love them. They're really, really good. And, uh, you know, I think that I, 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 while I have to work on them, you know, it really does show uh, because I added in a recent form, uh, you know, my, my other projections were weighted, but not weighted nearly as fine tuned uh, as these are. I added, uh, you know, past month, past 14 days, past seven days information uh, to the weights for 2019 uh, on top of just a 2019 weight. So there's a whole lot of different things in play here. Ballpark factors, I, I, I you know, mathed and factored in, again, thanks to Grace mostly. Uh, but there's a whole lot here in, in, in play. And all of that being said, Lourdes Goriel projects to be one of the best plays of the day, uh, leading off against Merrill Kelly. Uh, so I would like to have him as a one-off. Other than that, you know, you could take Vladdy, you could take uh, Smoke has been on fire lately, and he projects really well, uh, almost three times value today. Uh, all the four, the top four guys in the Blue Jays lineup are all projected to get over four times value um, on, on, uh, on FanDuel. So, yeah. This is, a, this is a good game again for bats. And while... Again, Toronto may not be the best option if you're playing one uh, one lineup today or three lineups today. If you're playing a lot, get some Blue Jays in there because Merrill Kelly, uh, if his control is just slightly off, uh, he's going to get blowed up and it's going to be real bad. So that is where we stand there. Let's move on to uh, the next game. We've got uh, the Rays and the Red Sox. Here we have a confirmed Rays lineup, so that makes that nice and easy. Uh, there's nothing really major. They flipped, you know, they, they had Choi and Diaz as the three and four hitters and Brandon Lau and Garcia as the five and six hitters, and they flipped those pairs. So Lau and Garcia are now three, four. Uh, but it's basically the same thing. Lau's been cold lately. So if anything, it's a slight boost to Porcello, who honestly I'm not going to play anyway. So uh, the Rays have not been hitting well, uh, but Porcello is, you know, a mediocre pitcher at best who has been in poor form lately. So uh, while I'm not going to be high on the Rays, I'm not really high on Porcello either. Uh, this is one of those spots where, you know, maybe 1% exposure, get, get, get some bats in there. Austin Meadows is always an awesome play. Tommy Pham is always a good play. Uh, but you know, you could do better today uh, than the Rays, almost certainly. Uh, on the other side, we have Yanni Chirinos going against the Boston Red Sox. And this one's interesting. Yanni Chirinos, uh, when he starts, he does really well and he's been in really good form lately. Uh, he's 8,100 on DraftKings, only 6,500 on FanDuel because he's normally the guy that comes in after the opener and not given the chance to start, but he does get starts every once in a while. So, um, you know, this is a guy that, especially on FanDuel, is going to be a great, great value play today. Uh, I think that he is going to be able to, uh, you know, while it's not an easy lineup and while it won't come, uh, you know, without some difficulty, uh, Chirinos is really is that good a pitcher uh, when, when, when we get down to it. His stuff really is that good. Uh, and if he was, you know, a starter instead of someone that comes in after the opener and gets a question mark amount of minutes, uh, you know, he would be over 9,000 uh, uh, in terms of, in terms of salary on both sides. So, you know, we, when you have uh, external factors that limit price for someone uh, that, you know, is beyond his or our control, we need to take advantage of that. So, for example, you know, if you have someone who mashes lefties, right, but only plays against lefty starters, you're going to see a, 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 a far deflated price for what they would be if they played every day. So you can get, you know... Uh, hitting specialists or, or other kinds of specialists for cheaper than you otherwise would uh, because they don't get the amount of plate appearances or innings pitched or what have you that others would. Uh, so when you have the chance to do something like that with like a Torino, or with a right-hander uh, that mashes lefties going against a lefty that may start every four or five days, you know, a Steve Pierce when he's hitting well, 
uh, you know, it, it behooves you to do that because that's a, a good way to separate yourself from the field uh, who may not have that much information or is just going by, you know, math and projections, you know, and they don't get into it as much as they really should. Um, and then, you know, like I said, uh, I, 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 that's about it. I don't really have anything to add here. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to play the Red Sox as much as I like the Red Sox, as good as their bats are. Uh, I'd rather have Torino's today. Next game up, we have uh, the Rockies and the Mets. Uh, right now, DeGrom projects to be the best pitcher of the day for me uh, in terms of value. He's going to get a little more than three times value on DraftKings. Uh, he has been in good form recently, uh, but the real big factor is the, the ballpark, as I've explained many times. Uh, City Field gives a nice boost to pitchers uh, and a nice uh, downgrade to batters. So Jacob DeGrom looks a lot better and all the bats look a lot worse. Uh, in this game. So give me DeGrom. He's 9,400 on DraftKings. He should never be, you know, I don't care what his, what his form is. Uh, Jacob DeGrom is a 10,000 plus pitcher every time he pitches, especially, especially against a Rockies team outside of Coors Field. Uh, so yeah, give me all the DeGrom today. Uh, he is one of the most underpriced pitchers. If he were 11,000, we'd have some discussion about whether to pay up to Garrett Cole or not. But as it stands, you know, Jacob deGrom is far too underpriced. Uh, if he is healthy, he is going to be able to crush this. Um, you know, this, you know, as, as, as nice as Tapia has been, he's not Charlie Blackman. As decent as Ryan McMahon has been, he's not DJ LeMay here. You know, this is not... This is going to be a much easier matchup for DeGrom. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have some DeGrom. On the other side, we have the Mets at Sensatella. Uh, much like with the other uh, uh, teams that I've talked about, I, I really do like the Mets today. I recommended playing them yesterday. Uh, and look at how they did. They, they went back to back to start off the game, scored a whole bunch of runs. Uh, and they were relatively unowned uh, for that afternoon slate. Um, and while, again, I like them today, Sensatella is one of the worst pitchers in the game, uh, there are still better places to go. So while, you know, again, if you're playing a lot of lineups, the Mets are someone to consider. Uh, if you are playing cash or you are doing, you know, only three lineups, I would still uh, wind up looking elsewhere. But again, don't play Sensatella. Uh, you know, if you want to get some, you know, one-offs for the Mets in there, have no problem. I apparently Cano could be back today. I don't understand that, but that's what I saw. Uh, if that's the case, he's 3000 and that's way too cheap uh, batting third against Sensatella. Uh, McNeil should be leading off. He's underpriced because he's coming back from injury, which is another thing you could take advantage of. Uh, he's at 3,800. His price hasn't uh, come back up to where it should be. So, you know, there are some one-offs to get there, but again, Given the park that they're in, given everything else, uh, there are some better better spots today. Uh, next up is the Yankees and the Indians. Uh, we have the wind blowing in here. Uh, ooh, did I spell Gregorius wrong? Yes, I did. Let's try that one more time. There we go. I had spelled Gregorius wrong. Um, the Yankees and the Indians, we have Domingo Herman, who's a good pitcher. Uh, pitching poorly versus Zach Plesak, whose price still hasn't come up to where it should be. I have been on the play Zach Plesak uh, train every time he's pitched so far, uh, which I believe is twice. <clears throat> And he has done very well for me both times. The first time uh, he was 4,500 against Bo the Boston Red Sox. Expected It was a, a two-game slate, and he was unowned. Uh, got 11 D. EKP, one of the highest, you know, and while that's not a lot, he had one of the highest uh, values on the slate and let me get in a bunch of bats that helped me get some money in that day. Uh, his second start, he was only up to 5,000 against the White Sox, and he wound up with 24.8 DKP, seven strikeouts and in seven innings. Zach Plesak is someone I told you that is a very good pitcher. He was undervalued because of a high school or a college, I can't remember, but before the draft, he got injured. So his draft stock sunk, uh, and then he had to work back from injury. But over the last year, after the full, you know, recuperation period uh, has has was completed, Plesek has looked like a fantastic pitcher. 
So I think that, <clears throat> again, while it may not be the safest, he has shown you upside against even good teams and good offenses. And he is going to go unowned, completely unowned. This Yankees team is not projected to get six runs. They're projected to get 4.7, which is about middle of the pack. And Plesak is priced like he's, you know, an opener. It's absolutely insane. I'm going to have a lot of Plesak today. He is absolutely one of my favorite pitchers. <clears throat> Excuse me on this slate, uh, given everything. Uh, I think the Yankees are dangerous. I don't think anyone's going to argue that, but I think that that's going to keep his ownership far lower than it needs to be. And I will take a Zach Plesak uh, getting three times value at one, two percent ownership every day of the week. Uh, and I think I will tonight. Uh, on, you know, on the other side, again, we have Domingo Herman, who, like I said, is a good pitcher, uh, who's been pitching very poorly lately. Uh, well, okay, this is the one. So this is the one that I had the hardest time deciding on because either the stat is like really, really great or abysmally terrible. So his strikeouts per nine, 14.5 over the last couple weeks. Holy crap, that's fantastic. His home runs per nine, 5.2. Dear God, that's a lot of home runs. His whip is 1.96. That is awful. His ERA, 10.38 with the FIP, 8.11. Boy, all of that is terrible, terrible, terrible. But his XFIP is 2.83. It's Grace. Yay, Grace. Grace is my savior. I love you, Grace. You saved me. You made everything okay with the projections. I can't thank you enough. I spent the first few minutes of the video thanking you. So if you are joining me live, make sure at some point you go back there because I thanked you a lot and I'm still not done thanking you. I owe you a lot more than a thanks on a video a couple times. Uh, but again, Domingo Herman uh, has looked great and looked terrible over the last couple of weeks. This is an Indians team that seems to be rounding into form. Uh, Lindor has looked better lately. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a team that I love, but it's, you know, this is kind of one of those middle of the pack things, you know, I'm going to kind of avoid both. Honestly, I might have some exposure if I'm doing 150 to both, but light, and I'm not really, uh, trying to fit either in, especially given, you know, the pricing, um, Lindor, as much as I would want to play him is up to 5,400 now. You know, and Herman is as much as I might want to take a chance on him is 9,500 now, and there's just no excuse for that when Degrom is you know right there, and he's going to do significantly better uh, against a worse team in a much better park. So, give me all that. It's all about comparisons. Let's move on. We got the Twins and the Tigers. Let me make sure no other lineups have come out while I'm talking. Oh boy, while I was talking, four new lineups came out. Let's see. Is there anything that I've talked about that is no longer relevant? No. Yes. Everything that I have said is good so far. And the one of the lineups that came out is Tigers and this game that I am now going to discuss. And that is perfect. Dixon, Rodriguez, Hicks, Lugo. So Greenier is getting a day off, but that's it. Uh, that's still a pretty crappy Tigers lineup. If anything, it's a side grade from Hicks to Greenier. Neither of them can hit really well. And Hicks is really only good against lefties. Uh, so it's not like that's going to be an upgrade. So let's talk about it. Twins and Tigers. We have Pineda uh, going against Matthew Boyd. This is one where give me all the pitchers. Uh, I, again, you know, it's a question of comparison. So while I really do like Matthew Boyd today, you have to weigh the fact that he's 10,400. Uh, and he's going against a Twins team that is absolutely murder. Uh, you know, he throws a fastball, a four-seam fastball, more than 50% of the time, and as, it, and, and as I've discussed uh, multiple times, the Twins are one of the best teams in baseball, like number two against the fastball. So uh, this is one of those, uh, the Twins are good, uh, Boyd is good, cancels each other out, 
the prices are just too much to take chances on Boyd. Uh, if anything, you could take a, a GPP's chance on a very underpriced Twins team. Uh, that was everybody on the, if you remember, like a week ago, everyone on the Twins was over 5,000. Now the most expensive twin is Rosario at 4,400, and then Polanco and Garver at 4,400, at 4,300, and then everyone, everyone else is 4,000 and under tonight. So while I don't love the twins. I don't recommend playing the twins. That is uh, too cheap for their projection and for their upside. You know, they are still projected uh, to get 4.7 runs today, which like the Yankees isn't the highest, but is in the middle, you know, against Matt Boyd, who's 10-4, you would expect them to be, uh, you know, significantly worse off than, uh, you know, a, a win by half a run, which is what they are. They're projected to win by half a run. So, uh, you know, this is not, uh, again, a, a great spot for Boyd. This is not a great spot for the Twins. Uh, but I would much prefer, if to, if you had to choose, taking some Twins bats, given the price and their upside, over Boyd, uh, who, you know, again, I'd rather uh, spend up to, to Cole or spend down to DeGrom. Uh, you know, one, one thing uh, I linked on my Twitter, if you... Um, didn't see it. I didn't. Okay. Let me see if I can get to where there it is. I'm so bad with this crap. Here we go. Which pitchers are projected to get the most strike ups, the strikeouts today? Sports Info Solutions, uh, who does really, really great, great work. Really, really great work. Uh, and they tweet out random stats. You know, you have to pay for their service, uh, which I do not do because I do not have money. I need to spend it on the medicine, the five hundred dollars on medicine every week, but, but uh, they do tweet out uh, statistics daily about random things that are always really, really good. So it's at Sports Info underscore S I S. Uh, and today I, I I tweeted out there which pitchers are projected to get the most strikeouts today. Lineups pending, obviously. Garrett Cole ten point eight. Jacob DeGrom, 9.2, and then all the way down to Andrew Heaney, 7.1, Clayton Kershaw, 7.0, Matthew Boyd, 6.3. So while those aren't bad numbers, I mean, if you pitch six innings and get seven strikeouts, you're doing a hell of a job. Uh, you know, they're nowhere near uh, as elite as the, the, the Garrett Coles or the Jacob de Groms. Uh, and for the prices, there's really no way that you can justify apart from, you know, GPP exposure arguments, uh, paying for a Matt Boyd when there are so many other similarly priced options with upside. Uh, on the other side, we have Pineda, uh, where, oh, I hate it so much. Can I tell you all how much I loathe loathe, not hate, loathe the new lineup page on DraftKings that I have to go to switch to old layout every time. And it doesn't show you like the new, oh, I couldn't tell you just how much I hate it. Uh, Pineda is coming off the IL. Uh, he has been in really good form lately. He is going against the worst offense uh, in the American League. He is projected to, you know, the Twins are projected to win by, you know, a half a run, and he's 6,400. Now, I know that he's coming off the IL. Uh, obviously, that, that should give people cause for concern, but his last start was like 10 days ago. So it's not like he's missed a month and he's no longer stretched out. You know, Pineda can come back tonight and still throw the 90 pitches that he's been throwing. Uh, and he's been getting you about 20 DKP almost every start. So, again, if you are looking for strikeout upside, if you are looking for value, uh, you know, we have a really fantastic one uh, in Michael Pineda today. You know, while it has only been the one start. Hey, Artis, how you doing today? Thank you for coming again. Welcome back. Um, you know, over that one start, no walks, no home runs, 0 0.5 whip, 1.15 FIP, uh, nine strikeouts per nine. Pineda is a, is a good pitcher if they don't notice the pine tar on his hat. Uh, so I, I am going to, uh, you know, have some exposure to him because he's just far, far too cheap. 
given everything else. You know, if, if he were going against the, you know, the Red Sox or, or the Houston Astros, I would give it some thought, but Pineda against a really bad Tigers team is not something that, that really fills me with worry or dread or makes me, you know, want to say like, Ooh, I don't know if I can afford that 6,400 uh, when, you know, he has as much upside as certain $8,000 pitchers, uh, if not more than certain $8,000 pitchers today. I mean, Jose Urena is 7,500. Uh, let's, let, 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 I can go through this. Marcus Stroman is 8,200. It strikes out nobody. Zach Eflin is 8,700. One of the worst pitchers in baseball over the last three weeks. Merrill Kelly, 8,400. None of these guys have the upside that Pineda has. And Pineda is 2,000 less than them. So again, uh, you know, FanDuel is a lot closer to having it right with him at 7,500. DraftKings is a, is a damned abomination. So I would I would assume that I'm not alone here. I have not checked ownership projections today. As I've said on many, many occasions, I don't like to check ownership while I'm doing stuff because I don't think it's as significant as people think. I would rather do all of my work and then look at ownership afterwards and establish while I'm doing the work where I think ownership is going to be and then see where they have ownership and why I may or may not disagree with them. Uh, I think that is a really handy exercise. So right now, uh, Pineda is only projected to be 12% owned by Roto Grinders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, mo seventh most uh, owned pitcher. That is absolutely, that's just ludicrous. I don't know what to tell you. There's absolutely no reason for that to be the case. So give me the Pineda today, 6,400. You know, it's never going to be safe to play Pineda, but I don't, again, I don't know how you argue with 6,400 on DraftKings. 7,500 on FanDuel, you only get one pitcher. <sighs> DraftKings, though, I'm beating that up. Let's move on. We have the Braves and the Marlins, and both of these lineups have just come out while I was talking as well, which I absolutely love. It is the exact Atlanta lineup I projected. Ooh, and a much, ooh, that's a worse Marlins lineup already with Martin Prado batting second. That's a boost to Soroka, I tell you that. Uh, Ramirez, yeah, so the only difference is that uh, Martin Prado for the Marlins is hitting instead of Garrett Cooper. Uh, which is a significant downgrade because Garrett Cooper has been one of the only hot hitters on the Marlins. Well, not one of the only because they got 16 runs and that screwed everything up. But Garrett Cooper has been one of the only Marlins that's been hot over like a two-week stretch, him and Alfaro. Uh, he's been one of the only consistent hitting Marlins over the last couple of weeks, I should say. So for them to lose him in the lineup against... Uh, a fantastic pitcher for the Braves and someone who really will be in the discussion for rookie of the year this year, uh, even though Pete Alonso is going to win it. Um, Mike Soroka really is an absolutely fantastic pitcher uh, and the Marlins just made themselves significantly worse uh, just by that one lineup move. It really is. And that's why I like doing videos as late as I can on these days that you know, luckily I slept through my alarm twice because I spent, you know, I got two hours of sleep over the last couple of days trying to do the projections. But, um, you know, Soroka is a very good pitcher. While he's not, you know, he doesn't have the upside of like a Cola or a DeGrom today, uh, he is still a absolutely fantastic pitcher. And I don't think it's crazy given the ownership projections uh, to pivot off of Cole to Soroka. So if you are playing even just one lineup, you know, while I don't think Soroka has the strikeouts, uh, he's not going, you know, he's going against a, a, a worse team than the Orioles uh, in a better hitters park. Uh, and he does have significant upside and he won't have the ownership that, uh, that belies the upside that he has. So, Again, while I would much rather just pay 2000 less and get DeGrom, uh, if you are hellbent on spending up for somebody uh, and you realize that, you know, what is it, 30% Garrett Cole, 22% Garrett Cole, 38% DeGrom, uh, you know, you're hellbent on Garrett Cole and you want to spend up, 
not a bad play to go 600 cheaper, get Soroka against a very bad Marlins team who just made themselves even worse with Martin Prado Mm -hmm. in the number two hole. Uh, On the other side, Urena has been pitching decently, Mm -hmm. not decently enough that you can play him, uh, decently enough that when you factor in the ballpark and everything, the no thanks as to what? Artists. I'm sorry. I don't know what that's a reference to. You're like a little delayed from what I'm saying. It's like a, like a second or two. So you could be, oh, you, yeah, I, today I don't, I'm not going there either, but I love them both, right? I just think there's far too much value on the slate overall. So when I give my summary, I'm going to talk about that at the end. Uh, but th- this slate is just chock full of underpriced pitchers with high strikeout upside. Uh, so I, 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 while I do like Colin Soroka and I would not be surprised if either one of them has the highest score, uh, not at all. If either one of Soroka or Cole has the highest score today. Uh, I, I, I don't know how you can justify the 11,600 when again, there's like a DeGrom there or Woodruff who I'll get to, uh, who has all the upside in the world, significantly cheaper. Pineda is so cheap. I, there's just too many options. I love Plesac. There, there's just too many options that are too cheap uh, to justify that. Um, especially given again, that Garrett Cole is going to be the third most popular pitcher on the slate, according to Roto Grinders. So uh, Urena has been pitching well enough that I don't really want to target against him in this ballpark, but not well enough in terms of striking people out or doing anything else. Well, uh, that I'm going to play him at 7,500, especially given all the other options around there. So that was easy. Let's move on. Athletics at the Rangers. We have Brett Anderson, who is terrible uh, against Lance Lynn, who is not good, but has been pitching like an ace. Uh, The problem there is that Lance Lynn's price has skyrocketed. He was someone just two weeks ago we could get for 6,000, you know, high 6,000s in his starts. And now he's 9,700. He's more expensive than DeGrom. uh, And that's just ludicrous especially given the fact that the Oakland A's and the Texas Rangers are basically playing a pick with a 10-run Vegas total, meaning that Lance Lynn and company are going to give up five runs to the A's when you have, you know, a Garrett Cole where the Orioles are going to get 2.7, a Soroka where the Marlins are going to get 3.1, a DeGrom where the Rockies are going to get three. There's a lot of uh, Woodruff where the Pirates are going to get 3.5. There's a lot, a lot of options. And Lancelin being priced at 9700 is not one to play unless you're just trying to pick people that are so crazily overpriced that no one is going to play them. You know, if you if your strategy is, uh, you know, let's play the really expensive dudes that no one else is going to play because they're way too expensive, you might win sometimes, but that's not my strategy, especially not when... Uh, it's 90 degrees with the wind blowing out at 11 miles an hour. So give me the bats there. Uh, Again, though, I'm not going to go too hard on Oakland because Lynn has been pitching like an ace lately, but I'm just not paying the 9,700. On the other side, though, Brett Anderson is a terrible pitcher who has been pitching terribly. And while the Texas Rangers are pathetic against left-handed pitchers, this is still going to be one of the best spots today. So um, Brett Anderson is that bad. The ballpark is that good. Uh, The weather conditions are that good uh, that I do really like, you know, DeShields, Andrus, Pence, Forsyth, Cabrera. Uh, Mathis at 2,000 doesn't hit a lick, but he's only 2,000. So you could get in you know, those expensive pitchers and a stack of your choosing and still take a one-off that could get you, you know, six, six points today. He gets you a home run. My God, think of what, what he pays off. So, you know, while I don't think he's, I don't even know if he's going to hit a home run this season. Um, 2000 is just too cheap for anybody that's in a lineup. Uh, and you could make, you know, take, take advantage of that. Like when Martin Maldonado uh, was 2200, uh, a week ago, and he wound up hitting a home run that day. Won a few of you, won a few of you some money. You know that's the way you got to approach it. Uh, so yes, give me the, the the Rangers bats. There are some spots I like better, uh, but 
give me the Rangers bats today and avoid Lance Lynn for the price. Ooh, White Sox lineup is out. Where's the White Sox? White Sox. Have I not gone over the White Sox yet? Wow, this is lucky. Every lineup that's coming out is after the one that I'm talking about. Uh, so here we have the next game, the Pirates and the Brewers. And this is my favorite stack of the day. I don't think I'm going to be alone. Um, rookie Davis uh, pitches like a rookie Davis. He is not that good. Uh, you know, I've watched his starts before because this is not his first start uh, in the majors. Uh, it's his first start this season, uh, but he has pitched before and I have watched him. Uh, I have watched him and I have looked at all the advanced stats and it all looks bad. Uh, there's a reason the Brewers are far and away the highest projected team today, and it's because uh, Rookie Davis is that bad. So I'm going to overload on Brewers. Uh, I can understand if you want to buck the field going to other places. Uh, you know, there's a plenty of other places to go, the Astros, the Angels. I've talked about many, many stacks that are going to go under-owned while people focus on other teams uh, that, are, that have higher totals. But... The reason the Brewers have a six-run total is is very good, and it is justified, and I would expect them to exceed it uh, in this game, especially against uh, the, 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 the rookie Davis and the bullpen. Um, ugh, he's not. I don't know. It's not. No. I know, uh, I know lineup strategies, but it's a question. It's a it's a function of playing a lot of different lineups and knowing how to set exposures and how to build. So, you know, for example, uh, if you want someone who really does well, shit my money. Uh, if you, you know, Adam Shearer uh, has talked in great detail about, uh, you know, the way he will build the 150 lineups where, you know, he will attribute portion of the 150 to five, three stacks, and then attribute a portion of the 150 to four, four, and then attribute some to five, two ones. And, you know, he will set exposures based on uh, what projected ownership is on Osimo. And yes, I understand how this all works and everything like that, but yeah, not, he's not a good example. Uh, he's, you know, that's, I don't know if you are him, or this is, you've been trolling me because that's not a name I want to hear. Uh, on the other side, Woodruff is one of the best pitchers today. Uh, he is underpriced. He's projected to do one of the best. He's going to get like 20 uh, DKP today at 7,800. And that is uh, absolutely, absolutely ludicrous. The Pirates are not a good team. They're projected to get 3.5 runs, which is one of the lowest on the slate. Uh, and Woodruff has, uh, this is not the first time I've talked about him being hot. He has been hot for about a month. 11.3 strikeouts per nine, almost no walks, almost no home runs. A 1.08 whip, 2.48 FIP, 3.64 XFIP, 3.21 Sierra over the last couple of weeks. And the numbers before that were even better. Uh, Woodruff has been in fantastic form. Uh, he is really really undervalued. I know that in his last start, he got smashed by Pittsburgh, but that's just going to work to lower ownership on him. Uh, I will get there CNG because I have not gotten to the late games yet, but I can give you like a late game summary when I'm doing the late games. Uh, that's different than the one that I'm talking about for the full game. Um, so Woodruff, you know, is going to go under owned because he just got hit by the, 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 the pirates, but you know, the Pirates are a worse offense than the Phillies, and the Phil he got 39.4 of DKP in the start before against the Phillies. So Brandon Woodruff is going to be one of the highest-owned players today, but for good reason. Uh, he is in a fantastic spot against a poor defense, and while the ownership will be high, I don't expect it to be as high as it should be, especially considering... Um, you know, the upside that he has, the amount of strikeouts he's been getting, how poor Pittsburgh is, and everything else. I think that there are too many people who are going to see that last start against Pittsburgh and be like, I don't think so. Uh, so I want to move on to the next game, but I believe we have our first backtrack now. Uh, we have the official Red Sox lineup that has come out. It looks like J.D. Martinez is getting a rest in Let's see. It looks like Eduardo Nunez is going to be 
getting the start for J.D. Martinez. That is, and I don't need to tell you this, a significant downgrade to the Red Sox lineup as a whole and an upgrade to Yanni Chirinos. So all the more reason to play Yanni Chirinos today. Again, it's not like the Red Sox lineup is a bunch of schleps here. It's still Betts, Benintendi, Devers, Bogerts at the top. But Mitch Moreland is back, and he was cold as anything before he got injured. Uh, Nunez only really hits lefties well, uh, and Chirinos is a righty, so that's a significant downgrade. And then Holt and Leon are not very good hitters and haven't been lately. So while Bradley has been hot, uh, Chirinos is in a much better, much better spot without J.D. Martinez there. All right, let's move on. We got a Baltimore and we got a Houston. This is one of the most obvious ones of the day. Uh, if you don't mind spending money, Garrett Cole, 12-2 against a Baltimore Orioles team projected to get 2.7 runs. Uh, the, the roof should be closed, but you know that should help Garrett Cole as well. Um, because if it's open, it's 90 degrees, which is much worse for, well, everybody, but much better for the Astros bats. So kind of pay attention to that. Uh, but I would expect the roof to be closed. Um, Garrett Cole is probably going to be the best or the second best pitcher of the day. Uh, if you run this slate a hundred times, uh, most of those times, Garrett Cole is either going to be one or two in terms of how many DKP he puts up today. Uh, the issue is I don't expect him to be, you know, one, two, or three in terms of the value that he provides for the salary. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people, I don't know. I don't know how to how to word this in 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 a way. Uh, a lot of people like to take the raw points, right? They say roof open in Toronto. You can open the roof in Toronto. I thought that that was a closed dome. The Rogers Center has an open roof, huh? That you learn something new every day. I really, really thought that the Rogers Center had a closed roof. Like a, it was a dome and not a retractable stadium. Where is that? Can you tell me where you get that information? Because I really want to know that. I would love to have like a, a site that tells me if all the roofs are open or not, because that does affect, you know, it does affect a lot. Even if just the windows are open in Arizona, uh, it, it affects a lot. It's really, it, yeah. It's really, really a huge deal. I, please let me know where you get that information, Texas. If it's just random dudes on Twitter, uh, then I'll just keep searching that. But that's really good information. I really do want to know uh, if roofs are open or not because I really, I'm going to have to look that up after the video. And I want to click clack away while I'm talking here. Uh, but let's get back to it. Garrett Cole, best pitcher of the day. Safest pitcher of the day. Most expensive pitcher of the day for a good reason. <clears throat> Don't really need to get into it. <clears throat> Gabriel Enoa, probably the worst pitcher of the day, uh, with the worst bullpen of the day going behind him. The Astros are projected to get 5.3 runs today, and I think that they should, you know, eclipse that even with the poor bottom of the lineup. You know, while I'm not a big fan of Marisnik or Mayfield uh, against a righty, Kemp has been hitting really well at 3,700. Chirinos is one of the best ca catcher's options today at 4,300. And then you have underpriced everybody else. 4,200 Fisher leading off. Bregman's 5,300. Uh, the way he's been hitting is underpriced. Brantley, 4,700. He should be 5,000 plus. Guriel, not hitting great, but 3,700. Reddick, 4,000. He's been coming into form. Uh, this is. If not, you know, this is almost certainly going to be the second best stack of the day. Uh, I don't know what the lineup's going to be officially if they're resting some people, but given what it's projected to be, absolutely love Houston today. I'd still rather have some Brewers against Rookie Davis, uh, but Houston would be a second, second place. All right, moving on. Next game is the White Sox and the... Kansas City Royals. We have a uh, pitcher, uh, excuse me, a hitters game here today. Uh, the Royals are projected to win four, five point two to four point eight, uh, and that's with the wind blowing in at ten miles an hour. So, this is one where if you are going to have any exposure to this game, do it with your bats. Uh, I don't think that these hitters warrant stacking when you have much better options out there. But if you are going to take, you know, something from this game, uh, I would take the bats. Uh, White Sox bats specifically. Nova is not a good pitcher. He's not a strikeout pitcher, but he is a ground ball pitcher. 
Uh, and that is something that I try to avoid. Ground ball pitchers don't give up a lot of home runs and they give up less production generally uh, than other types of pitchers. So uh, I don't like the Royals as much as the White Sox. Homer Bailey is the second or third worst pitcher going tonight. So I would like to have the White Sox as a contrarian stack that a lot of people aren't going to be on. You know, Garcia Moncada have looked great. Abreu's cold, but He's a fantastic hitter. McCann has looked really well, uh, really good lately. Tim Anderson down there in the seven hole at 5,000 for a shortstop is a lot, but no one's going to pay that. Uh, and, you know, Homer Bailey really is that bad. Let's move on to the last three games, AKA night slate. Okay. So I'm going to give a, uh, a quick summary here. Uh, first up, I will go over the projections that I have uh, as of right now. And this, this should kind of tell you everything in terms of where I would go tonight. Uh, my, my projections say Marco Gonzalez will get about five DKP. Andrew Heaney will get about 22. Eric Fetty will get about 11. Nick Markovicius will get 0 0.5. Clayton Kershaw will get 20.7. And Drew Pomeranz will get negative 3.6. So that means that there's only really three pitchers that you can take here. Uh, Heaney, Fetty, and Kershaw. Nobody else is even going to be out of the double digits. So I would start uh, on the, if you're doing the, just the night slate uh, by trying to fit in Heaney and Kershaw. Heaney preferably because Heaney has the highest value. Uh, yeah, Eloy, I like Luke. That's a good point. Eloy Jimenez as well has been hitting very well. 3,300. I did skip over him to get to Tim Anderson, but there's some value in that White Sox lineup. And Homer Bailey really is that bad. You know, he's one of those dudes where he, he lives up to his name. He gives up a ton of home runs. So this is a very sneaky White Sox stack. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to be on them and they really, really can pay off dividends tonight. Um, but yeah, I, the, 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 the angels, uh, with Andrew Heaney and the Dodgers with Clayton Kershaw are going to be the two pitchers that I'm focused on getting. Um, if I am looking anywhere else, it's going to be taking a GPP's chance on Eric Fetty. Uh, but everybody else has been really, really bad. I mean, really bad. Marja Vicious got called up from AAA, got hammered. Marco Gonzalez, you know, was like 7-0 and to start off the season or something, but he was boxing over his weight and he is getting knocked down to earth precipitously and drew Pomeranz again projected to get uh, a negative DKP by my projections today. So I don't think there's a lot more that you can do to put yourself in a good position tonight uh, than to take Kershaw and Heaney and then fit in the bats that you can, there is going to be enough value. So let's go game by game in it now. And then we could talk about that. So first up, we have uh, the Mariners and the Angels. Again, uh, Heaney and Gonzalez. I'm all over Heaney on the night slate. I love Heaney, period. Uh, 9,200 Heaney is priced similar to DeGrom. And while I don't think he has uh, the same upside, he still has fantastic upside. So I'm a big fan of Heaney tonight, uh, which means I'm not so big a fan of the Mariners' bats. I think Heaney and company will be able to uh, to stop them pretty pretty well, uh, especially given the fact that, you know, Tom Murphy's projected to, to play because the, the lefty, it's just a lot. Oh, no, that's not okay. I don't know. I don't want that name there. How do I make that name not show up? I don't want that. I don't want that remove. Can 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 anyone can everyone see that? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, thank you. Oh, there we go. That should get rid of them. Okay, here we go. Sorry, folks. None of that on my YouTube. Um, uh, so give me the angels against Marco Gonzalez. We have some really good bats here. Uh, that are really, really cheap. Fletcher, 4,300, has been mashing it. Pujols and Puelo, 43, 4,100. Uh, Kevin Smith should be catching tonight, 3,300, not bad at all. Uh, while these angels are, you know, they're not priced as well as some of the, the Dodgers that I would like to play tonight going against a lefty, uh, they are going to be like the secondary offense uh, that I'm going to be targeting based on pricing. 
Uh, next game, we have the Nats and the Padres. Uh, again, we have Eric Fetty, who's not a good pitcher, but is like the GPP option that I would take, and Nick Marjavicious, who is not a good pitcher at all. Uh, so I'm going to load up on bats. Uh, the Nationals' bats look really, really good today. Um, you know, the only problem is there's no real way to afford a stack of them and to uh, and to get the two pitchers that you're going to want to get on this slate. So, you know, I will say you can play a, a Dozier for 3,700, uh, a Robles for 4,400, but, you know, everybody else that, that you can take is 5,000 and up, and that's just not really feasible, uh, especially, you know, uh, even, as bad as Marge Vicious has been. Uh, I just can't pay 5,800, 5,500, 5,200, because at that point you're going to have to pitch Marge Vicious or Pomeranz, and no thank you. No thank you. Uh, on the other side, Eric Fetty, again, hasn't been that great. Uh, this is a, the Padres team that looks a lot better with Tatis Jr. back uh, leading off. Uh, so I would really, if you are playing Kershaw, uh, if you are playing Kershaw and Heaney, which I would recommend, uh, this is a great Padres team to get some bats from. Um, Reyes at 4,200 is just far too cheap. Machado at 3,800 is pretty much insane. Hosmer at 4,000 is too cheap. Kinsler, 3,400 has been in great form recently. I know there's just a lot of bats here that are relatively cheap uh, for what they do, uh, and I would like to have them. Uh, let's move on to the last game uh, before I take off because I'm starting to get some spasms in my back. Uh, here is where I'm going to focus most of my bats. Uh, the Dodgers going against the lefty means that we get the lefty specialists going. And as I talked about earlier, when you have a specialist, um, you, you get underpriced people that have incredible projections. So you have Chris Taylor leading off, projected to lead off at 3,400 against Drew Pomeranz. That's going to be like the play of the day. Turner batting second, 4,200. Freeze batting third, 4,400. Kike Hernandez batting fifth, 4,100. Austin Barnes catching for only 3,600. Every single one of these plays is one of the best plays of the day. If you can fit them in in that late slate, you are going to want to run with them. If you can fit them in in the main slate, you are going to be able to get some pitchers uh, if you want to spend up on pitchers. The Dodgers are in a great spot. Like I said, Pomeranz is projected to get negative points today. Uh, so I'm going to load up on, on Kershaw and the Dodgers bats and stay the hell away from everybody on the giant side. Uh, so that is everything. Um, thank you all for joining me. That's the first time I landed it in just about an hour. That's perfect. I need to go lay down. Uh, thank you all again. Um, again, special thanks to Grace for helping me get my projections back up. The, 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 what you shared was so invaluable. I cannot thank you enough, and I have not finished repaying you. So thank you all for joining me. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter or wherever, and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, it's back to work. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Best of luck.